Hi, I'm Pit Boss Chef Kirk Nauman, and welcome to Pit Boss Fully Loaded. Today we're cooking up a unique Easter meal on the Sportsman 1600 and four burner griddle. We're trading in that traditional ham for a protein combo that will have your guests coming back for more. So let's fire it up on Pit Boss Fully Loaded. Have you ever wondered how to get the most out of your Pit Boss? Welcome to Fully Loaded, where I teach you how to unlock the full potential of your Pit Boss grill. Learn new recipes and pick up strategies to cook full meals. Load those grills to the max and unleash flavor like never before with expert tips and tricks. Pit Boss Fully Loaded is your ultimate grilling guide. Alrighty guys, for today's Easter meal, we're gonna be preparing a prime rib, boneless pork loin, and a bone-in turkey breast, along with our grind potatoes, and we're gonna do some sauteed asparagus, onion, and wild mushroom off of our ultimate griddle. Okay, first we're gonna get started on roasting the potatoes for our gratin potatoes. We're gonna roast these off until they're soft, and then we're gonna move into our proteins. When roasting potatoes, I always like coating them in a little bit of oil and salt and pepper. This kinda helps the heat sink through into the potato. A little bit of avocado oil. Pitch of salt and pepper. Give them a gentle toss so all the potatoes get coated in the oil and the seasoning. We can go right back into our roasting pan with these. We can go right on to our Pit Boss 1600. Today we have our grill set at 350 degrees. I'm using the oak blend pellet from Pit Boss as well. Normally when roasting a potato that's about this big around, somewhere around the size of a baseball, you're looking anywhere between about 45 minutes to an hour bake time on this. This is gonna give us plenty of time to get our proteins ready. All right, today we got ourselves a bone-in prime rib. I uh, just got it from the grocery store. We're not gonna need to utilize this whole prime rib. You do have an option whether you want to go boneless or you can leave the bone in. We're going to start first by cleaning up the prime rib and we're going to do the truss and then I can walk you through how to remove the bone if you wish to do so. Okay, now that we got our, our prime rib, we got it unwrapped and we got it dried off. It's just sitting here. Uh, it's still cold. I did not let it rest to room temperature. Uh, so where I normally start, some people like to leave this whole fat cap on. I, for one, I like to remove it and you can easily do this just by looking for the natural separation. This will not remove all of the fat, but it's gonna remove plenty of fat to where you don't have to worry about a, a fire starting in your grill. <clears throat> natural separation, you can see it, and just peel it down. Once you get all the way down to where the tip is gonna be, just separate that. and just take your bone and knife and you're just gonna go straight on down. You're gonna run into the bone. Now that you made that initial cut, you can see where each of the rib bones is right here on top. What you're gonna wanna do is that you're gonna wanna take your blade and you're gonna wanna follow the top side of this blade all the way down. Now you can see how it's starting to separate. You can just follow your line all the way down to your initial cut. It should just peel right on off for you. Now this, you can easily cut the meat out of it. You can save it for other applications, whether it be you're making your stews, things like that or you can just whack it up and you can put it in your oven and you can render it for some good beef tallow for later use. So today, normally we would French each bone and you would truss, but today we're gonna go with a, bone, uh, we're gonna go with a boneless ribeye. And so I'm gonna tell you, show you how to completely remove the bone. If you would like to keep the bone on, <clears throat> this is what you would do. You would just come right on down to the beginning of your loin on each side, you just carve that center piece of meat out. It's not necessary, but it does help for trussing. All 
All right, here we are. We're at a spot where we can pick to truss. And so what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna cut this whole ribeye in half. And so normally you would need a bandsaw for something like this, but if you have a sharp enough boning knife, you can follow through with these bones meet together and then you can follow through with a cut. For natural separation. Now that I found the separation between the bone, you can take a larger slicing knife. That'll help you get more of an even cut right through it. So now you got your two prime ribs. I will show you how we're gonna truss with the bone on, and then we're gonna remove this bone, and then we'll show you how to truss without a bone. Some people may ask, why do we go through the trouble of trussing our protein? On the ribeye particularly, you can see how the, out, how the outside cap is on here. When you roast at a higher temperature, this piece of meat typically wants to come away from the eye. Uh, so when you truss it and you hold it, this is gonna hold it, and it's also gonna ensure that your protein cooks at more of an even rate. So I just do one, one truss between each bone, should be fine. <clears throat> Trust me on this one. Nothing too tight, like so. So now you got your truss ribeye, you ready for the seasoning stage? Now, if you decide to go boneless, all you would do is just continue to follow the natural separation where the bone meets your protein. And so you can just kind of draw through. You'll notice some resistance where the bone will stop you. Literally, when you go back, you just kind of follow it all the way down, leaving as much as the protein intact on the loin. Now your loin is completely separated from your bone. You may ask, what am I gonna do with these bones? A dog loves chewing on beef bones. But also, if you'd like to, you can just whack them apart, freeze them, roast them in the oven, and you can make a delicious beef stock for a later date. Now we're gonna truss our boneless side of the loin. Notice how I started in the center on my truss. You can see how it kind of squeezed the loin together. You're just gonna, really, what you're trying to do is that in your first knot, that's why I lead the string rather long. You just kind of want to pull it together like so. It doesn't need to be extremely tight, much like when you're tying your shoe. Turn this around. Same instance, right underneath. Now that your loin is trussed like so, it will ensure a nice even cook on your loin. Okay, for our boneless prime rib, we're just gonna keep it kind of simple today. I'm gonna give it a rub with some avocado oil and we're gonna season with our prime beef rub. You don't need a whole lot of fat, just enough that's gonna help the seasoning clean to the loin itself. You just kind of move it all around. I always try to keep one hand clean. That way you're not having to wipe off your spice bottles, whatnot as you go. Nice even coat all around. Next protein we're gonna be working on is our bone-in turkey breast. 
kind of opting out for the whole bird, seeing how we have two other proteins we're going to be serving with it. And I really like the white meat breast. I'm going to show you today how we're going to trim up our bone in turkey breast, remove the wishbone, and season it uh, before we put that on the grill. One of the first things I like to do, some people like to leave this on, but I take this off first. Right where your natural separation is, is right here. And so what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your scissors or a sharp knife, whatever you have, and you're gonna come right on through to cut that loose. Come around to the other side. You can see where the separation is. Follow right on through. Now that you can see that that's all out of the way, this breast is gonna sit flat just the way that we wanna do it. All right, next thing, next thing's next. I don't really like to use this because we have our accurate temp probes that we have on our pit boss. We have all this access skin from the neck. All I'm gonna do is just follow it around. You can leave as much of this skin on as if you'd like, but I think removing it even with the breast is gonna yield a more evenly cooked breast. Trim off any access. Okay, wishbone. There's a wishbone inside of your turkey breast that's gonna come in here. So what you're gonna wanna do is that you're gonna wanna feel where your wishbone is, which is right here. The purpose why we're gonna be removing our wishbone is that once you remove the, wish, the wishbone and your breast is rested and it's cooked, it's gonna be so much easier to carve off the bone. And we'll definitely make that example here in a little bit. So I just follow on down both sides of the wishbone and then you just want to cut directly in there. Once you have your slice right on the inside of both sides, you can stick your finger in there, your hand, and you can see where your wishbone connects to the breastbone. This can be a bit challenging if it's your first time, but you can feel, physically feel where your bone connects to the breastbone. Normally I would just snip right there. Once you snip right there, you pulls right on out. Make a wish, folks. Now that we're at this stage in our turkey breast, we're gonna be roasting these proteins today. So I'm gonna base it with a little bit of oil and I'm gonna be putting an herb mixture of sage, garlic, thyme, and parsley. Salt and pepper, of course. Again, always try to keep one of your hands clean so you can handle your, your spice rubs and your oils and things of that such to avoid cross-contamination. <clears throat> Season with a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And we got your fresh chopped garlic can be a little challenging sometimes to get it on your breast, but I would just spoon a little bit on there. It's okay if some of it falls off on the board. The amount of garlic that you use on the outside of your, of your bird is totally up to you. Uh, just keep in mind that garlic will burn on, under high temperatures. And so again, uh, avoiding going over 350 degrees for X amount of time will keep your garlic from burning. Uh, I probably use somewhere around about a tablespoon of garlic. It's nothing over the top, but it's gonna be something that's really gonna give some aromatics. And then here we go with our fresh herbs. <clears throat> this particular herb mixture, it's equal parts chopped sage, fresh picked thyme, and parsley. <clears throat> now that we got our breasts all nice and seasoned up like so, we're gonna set this off to the side and we're gonna move right into our next protein. All right, now our final protein that we're gonna be prepping today is gonna to be a boneless pork loin. This is probably one of the easier cuts that you can use. Simply right out of the bag, very little trim, and you really don't have to worry about trussing. You can if you like, but there's really nothing that's gonna pull away during the cook process. Here's our pork loin. 
Some people like to score the fat over the top of their pork loin. You're more than welcome to do so. I'll make a small example. But it looks like this thing doesn't have very much fat on it to trim off. And so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna score our areas where there is fat. This will help for a, a good render of the fat. Notice I'm not going too deep. You really don't wanna go too deep. Pork loin is a very lean cut. And really all you wanna do is that you're gonna score it so as your fat renders, it's gonna sink in and it's gonna help cook a little bit more even. So nothing over the top. You can see it's maybe about an eighth of an inch in of a score. So seasoning. Today we're gonna do, we're gonna bind, use a binder of Dijon mustard and rosemary and parsley with just a little bit of salt and pepper. Dijon mustard and rosemary go together in many different ways. Uh, pork is one of my favorite. A little bit of Dijon mustard, a little bit goes a long way. So maybe about, maybe about a tablespoon at max. We're gonna put that on there. Again, try to keep one hand clean so you can manage your spices and seasonings. And as you can see, there's not a ton of mustard on here. You don't need a whole lot of mustard. It's, uh, it has a very bold flavor. And so it's also gonna help our herb and seasoning stick to the protein as well. So again, we're gonna go salt, pepper, all sides. When I season proteins like this, I'm not really trying to season it because once you carve into it, you're gonna have a whole lot more surface area that could use seasoning. This is where I let people at the dinner table decide whether they want more sauce, melted butter, or even more seasoning if they like. there. All right. That's about how you're going to want your pork loin to look just before you put it on the grill. All right. Now we're going to be firing off our proteins for today. Yeah, we have three pieces of protein here and only have two temperature probes. Okay. This is my approach on it. Okay. We're going to put one probe inside of our prime rib and one inside of our turkey breast. Reason being, we're going to be cooking our prime rib to about 110 degrees and we're gonna be cooking internally to about 155 to 157 degrees on the turkey. Why not 165 like everybody says? Most important thing to remember when you're removing large cuts of meat off your grill is that there's a thing called carryover cooking. So after you pull it off the grill and it continues to rest, it will continue to rise in temperature anywhere between four and six degrees, depending on the size of your piece of protein. We've managed to have three pieces of protein that are relatively in the same, in the same weight range. So we're going to monitor this one. Once this one comes off at 110 degrees, we'll pop, we'll pop that probe right into the pork loin. We're going to cook our pork loin to about 135 degrees with a carryover temperature to be about 140, 144 degrees. All right, on to the next. Okay, probe placement. On turkey breast that's bone in, you wanna, you wanna insert it into a deep part of the protein, but you don't wanna be right up against the bone. You're gonna wanna be off about a half an inch. Reason being, the bone, uh, the protein sitting closest to the bone is of its lowest temperature. And so if you're trying to reach an internal temperature of 155 degrees, you're gonna wanna be off each bone about one inch. Another really important thing to mention the pit boss is set at 350 degrees. Okay, all three of these pieces of protein plus our potatoes are gonna be roasting at 350 degrees. Typically when you smoke, you're gonna be smoking between 180 all the way up to about 275 degrees. 
We're really not trying to impart a ton of smoke flavor on here, but it will have a slight effect on it. Uh, 350 degrees, we can roast our potatoes and roast three pieces of protein. All we're doing is monitoring internal temperature. All right, guys, it's been about an hour. It's uh, about time to pull off these potatoes and let them rest so we can move into our ground potatoes. All right, nice golden brown, already cooked all the way through. Good way to tell whether or not they've been cooked all the way through. You can put a, a knife in them and you can pull it out just like so. We're gonna set these off to the side for the next maybe 20 minutes. Once they're at room temperature, we'll be able to slice them and move on to our gratin potatoes. Our primer has reached our 115 degree mark and we're gonna remove it from the grill. Now that we've removed our prime rib, we're gonna finish up our gratin potatoes. Right. Now that the potato is already cooked, you can slice it nice and thick because when we come back with our heavy cream and our flavoring agents, the potato is already gonna be done. Really all we're doing is just gonna be thickening the heavy cream and topping it with cheese. Laid it out shingle, nothing fancy. Anyone can do this. <coughs> All right, mixing bowl. I have here about a quart of heavy cream. Pretty sure we're only gonna need about two and a half to three cups. But we're just gonna gauge it and see where we're at. Really what you're looking for when it comes to making these particular types of foie gratin potatoes, I really wanna put just enough cream where you're gonna come up about halfway of the potato. And then we're gonna season this with salt and pepper. And then we're gonna flavor it with horseradish and we're gonna top a white cheddar cheese. There we go, full quart of heavy cream. Season our heavy cream, some salt. It's pretty important. Let's season your heavy cream with salt first to where it's seasoned to your liking. Also keep in mind that when you season your potatoes before, you still have salt and pepper inside of here too. And so you don't wanna overdo it. Nobody likes a salty potato. A quick gab. That's it, pinch more. A little bit of pepper, probably about a half teaspoon. I'm gonna do about two tablespoons of chopped parsley. Horseradish. Some people love it, some people hate it. I love horseradish, but I don't like it overpowering. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna add horseradish to this custard and try it as I go. I'm really not trying to clean out my sinuses. I just want a nice solid horseradish flavor. Probably about two and a half tablespoons. We're gonna give that a good mix and try it. That's pretty good. So now with our custard, we're gonna go ahead and just pour this right over our potatoes. There we go. See how we have reached our, what we're finished, about halfway up the potato on both sides. Sharp white cheddar cheese. Don't skimp out on the cheese. This is a good part. Right about two cups of white cheddar cheese. Ready to go right back on the grill.
Now that we notice, right at our 138 degrees for our pork loin, we're ready to pull this one off. Yeah, but look at that. We are right at about 145 degrees on our bone-in turkey breast. Right when those potatoes are gonna be done, we're gonna pull off our potatoes and our turkey breast, and we're gonna move right into our saute. By the time our saute is done, we're gonna be ready to start carving into this and eat. All right, folks, magic time is here. About about 158 degrees on our internal temperature of our turkey, it's time to pull it. for a rest. Another important thing that I'd love to reiterate, we had four items come off of one pit boss and it's all getting cooked at 350 degrees. Here shortly our potatoes are going to be ready, our proteins are going to be rested, we're going to carve them and then we're going to saute our veggies. Time to move on to our last and final item to our meal this evening. We're going to be doing sauteed asparagus tips with some wild mushrooms. Also have some garlic, onion and basil that we're going to be putting into this. Uh, here I got about a pound of baby portobello mushrooms that's been sliced and I have two bunches of asparagus here. Uh, maybe some don't know how to really clean asparagus. I always like to cut the first two to two and a half inches off at the bottom. As you can see on some of these that are pink, they're extremely woody on the bottom and they're hard to chew and it just simply doesn't taste very good. <clears throat> so again, I'll start at the top. About a one and a half two inch section and add that to here. The stages of this saute we're going to be using our four burner griddle. Uh, we're going to start to saute with our mushrooms and then once we start to get the steam and love that we want off of that one we're going to add our onions, uh, garlic and herb and then we're going to finish right at the end with our asparagus because asparagus is going to cook through real quick and we don't want them overcooked. All right. A little bit of butter. Seasoned in stages, a little bit of salt and pepper. Here we go, now we're gonna hit it with our onions, about 10 ounces of onion. Hit it with about two tablespoons of garlic. Last but not least, we're gonna add our asparagus. Notice how I'm moving the vegetables from zone to zone. I don't let this thing get to its hottest before I start my sauteing. I'll turn it on high, let it come up to a moderate heat. As you can see, we were just melting the butter. And as in the stages as I was sauteing my vegetables, I was moving it throughout the zone to keep, to keep from uh, cooking at such a high heat. Final stage of seasoning, a little pinch of salt.
pepper. And come in with our herbs last. I'm just going to turn the heat off. Come in with our full pan. Alright, we're just going to close that to keep that warm for the duration. Have a look at our potatoes. Well, that's exactly what we're looking for, folks. Check this out. Nice and creamy, cheesy. Right before we carve our proteins, I'm just gonna set this on the flat top right behind us so it continues to stay warm till we're ready to serve. <laughs> All right guys, now that we have our rested prime rib, I'm gonna put it on my carving board and cut the trusses off. Still want it to be nice and warm on the outside. If it does seem cold to the touch, don't be scared. Just pop it back on your grill for a few minutes to heat the uh, heat the outside, and you can move right along with this process. There you have it, folks. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop this right back here. We can slice for service. A little warm. A little bit of touch of some salt. A little bit of chopped herbs from what we were using earlier. And your prime rib is ready to serve. All right, right into our second protein, our roasted pork loin. Look at that, comes right up. Slice that right in half. Nice and moist in the center, not overcooked or dry. Nobody likes dry pork. Gonna set that right here. And there we go. And you're still getting a smoke ring on this. Last and final protein, beautiful roasted turkey breast. Going back, you remember that wishbone thing we were talking about? Find your sternum, your center of your breast, and you can go all the way down, and you don't even have to worry about hitting that pesky thing anymore. Trim down both sides of your breastbone. And all you do is just open it up, Right where you left off, that's where you're going to want to stick your knife and just carve it right off of that carcass, like so. Oh yeah, there's one breast. Second. There we go. Whew. 
dude, that is some really awesome looking turkey. Look at that. There you have it, guys. Just a little bit of time management. Using your pit boss in the backyard, you can make another fully loaded meal. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again on the next episode. Thank <laughs> you.